Hello everybody, this would be the next part. I'm running tests, I just clean it up, the tape pass. Uh, so far, no more new issues discovered. So uh, I still have to take a look why uh, the tape guides stuck in position left to right. So they should be moving into right to left and left to right. So one should be lower, another higher and so on dependent on direction and the embedded generator levels are a bit too high that's everything i found so far so i just installed the wow and flutter test tape so let's see i will start with quasi the peak levels so we're playing it's adjusting so you see frequency is 3154 that's what i thought I have heard that all the commission is couple gears higher. So that's a peak to peak values, 0.03 on average. And weighted RMS is 0.016, 15. It's perfect results. The lowest I have ever seen across any tape recorder I have seen so far. So that's good. So wow and flutter numbers are very great. Uh, let's see frequency response. So as you remember, I have DR2 frequency response tape. So let's rewind to the beginning and check the full range. So probably we just will do now calibration for azimuth first, probably on 15 or 10 kilohertz to make sure it will set proper azimuth and it's blinking. Done. Okay. Now we can rewind to the beginning and check the levels. I just recently checked it using millivolt meter. And now I believe you would be able to check using uh, this NAC T100 analyzer software. <coughs> so this tape has been recorded on Nakamichi DR2 and been verified with I believe 3 DR2 and 2 DR1 Nakamichis and it has been like in, in 1 decibel precision across all 5 decks so I hope this would be really really good okay so let's start so the first is I believe it's 250 gears let me see the levels okay it started playing and level is minus 8 decibel probably I've been calibrating let me see if you may calibrate levels again so uh, we have zeros here and zeros here okay then let's play so it's minus 8 decibel and frequency 200, no, 300 gigahertz, 315, okay, 315 minus 8 decibel, uh, fast forward, okay, same, almost minus 8 decibel, and frequency is 400 gigahertz, right here okay fast forward and still 400 a little bit more okay one kilohertz and level is there nothing changes fast forward more Still one kilohertz. Okay, 
Okay, three kilohertz. And this will be the reference of minus nine decibel. Okay. Pass forward. Yeah, minus nine decibel, but it's already six kilohertz. Okay, keep spelled. And rolling crazy quickly. Okay, level still there, and frequency is still 6.3 kilohertz. Pass forward to 10. Okay, 10 kilohertz. Levels are there. No change. Good. Pass forward in more. Okay, minus 10, minus 9 decibel on the left channel, minus 10 on the right, and it's frequency 15 kilohertz. So you see, it skips really well. 15 kilohertz, I can scroll more, it should still be 15. See, minus 10. Now oh, it's 18 kilohertz. And it still holds 18 kilohertz really well. And 20 kilohertz, the next step, it should be minus 5 decibel to what we have. It should be minus 15. Yes, it's minus 15 because this tape just cannot handle. So you see, and it's 20 kilohertz. It just don't measure here, so level probably is too low. So you see yourself, all tape, my frequency response tape play it really well. What else? Let me show you the face. So it adjusts the face. And I like to show you on 15 kilohertz. It's still 18 kilohertz. A little bit more. Okay, that's 15 kilohertz. That's the level. And let's see the face. A little bit off. Okay, let me pull out tape, pull it in, and make it adjusted. You see? It's been adjusting, did it there, and then moved back for some reason. And one more time, put it in. Okay, it's, it's close, but it's not there. So all in all, if I will fix that, phase difference, I believe it will compensate for those one decibel drop on the high frequencies. So that's how well this DEX is. So as I told you, low headwear, and as a result, we have perfect frequency response. Uh, what else? I'm not sure what I can check now. Probably recording. Let me see. <coughs> Symbol tape. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's start calibration process. So that's how to set up bias. So you see it's levels are screwed and for example i had a chance when like it's not possible to adjust levels because all oops because all settings has been like uh, screwed right so 
what to do. Uh, first of all, set to the level, adjust level so you can see both levels here, then use bias to find the maximum point. You see, it can go higher than we had. Okay, so that's the maximum point, and keep it here. And same for the right channel. Adjust it. Okay, so that's the maximum point. Now we can go to the bias, and that's how we should adjust bias. So we even. You see, face just worked out, and here is the recording face, as you see, it looks pretty smooth. Uh, so, what now? Go to the level. So, I told you that levels in this deck is off. So, here is a generator level, so it's source, and it's a tape, so we need to reduce a little bit. So, source, tape, source, tape, okay and bias so source plus one decibel tape let's make plus one decibel okay source tape that's that's well, that's a proper sequence not just put a zero make sure that level would not change okay checking 400 gears now we have uh, calibrated the reset sequence and i'm ready for recording so let's make it recording and it's so tape yeah. so what i would do i would go to the pink noise and here is the response so switching to the source and now tape I don't see any difference. <laughs> zero. White noise on zero decibel. Okay, source. Deep. It should be dropping because it's a uh, white noise. Minus 10. Source. Tape. You see zero difference. Type one tape. Minus ten decibel. Minus twenty. I bet it would be equal results. So source. And now tape. No change. Let's see minus six if it's capable. So do source. Source of minus six, type one tape, and tape. Just a little bit drop, like two decibels on the high frequencies. Wow, incredible. Results are pretty good. Let me see, let's try metal tape. to metal let's do calibration okay here source tape source tape works now bias oh we see how much bias we have okay source tape Source tape the levels source tape source tape and bias okay source tape source tape good set now let's record some metal tape Switching to 70 microseconds. So let's see that source. That's tape. 
just a little bit different, so minus 6 and 0 decibel, let's see. Source, tape, okay, pretty similar results, minus 20. Source, tape, no difference. Let's see, Dolby B. Okay, good. Dolby C. Okay, perfect. Okay, good results. And let's see, pink noise on zero decibel. It will be normalized. So, so we should do the source and tape. Perfect. Let's do minus twenty sweep. I put source for now. Pretty flat response. Okay, a little bit brighter on the high frequencies. But that's it. Okay, 22 kilohertz and switch into the tape. And let's see how it will be different now. Okay, I see about two decibel deviation on the high frequencies. So probably generator is not correct. So we can add a little bit with bias adjustment. Let's see if it's well fixed. I told you I didn't tune it up yet, didn't touch anything. So it came as this. I just touch it bias a little bit for this run. Let's see if it will restore the frequency response. Yeah, you see, just a little bit. And we have the same as it was before as the source. Okay, now let's check. Okay, maybe if I need to stop. Uh, around 400. Okay, and bias. Yeah, you see, it's just a little bit higher. Then uh, I put plus one, and it should be like blinking plus three to make it even. Okay, this would be the point to tune it up, but all in all results are perfect. I hope you're happy for me. Now I would be able to make you wow and flutter tapes, if you like. I specifically bought uh, very good tapes for that. So let me know if you're interested. Azimut tapes as well. 
So this would be it for this part. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next parts.